Hey YouTube, good morning. It is another day here, one of my first days in Japan in Ishikare-ku. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, I think I just murdered it. But that's where we stayed last night. Um, and today is actually looking like a really nice day. Check it out. So this is where we stayed last night. Here's the bike. I actually just, um, here's a closer look at where we are right now. Let's let that focus. There we are. In perspective of the entirety of Japan, this is where we are, right there. But um, I actually just turned my phone on because it was off for like the last 24 hours or so, because it went flat like when I got on the plane in Melbourne. So it's been flat since then and I didn't have a cord to charge or anything. Because I've just been a mess. All of my stuff and my belongings have just been scattered everywhere and I'm just so unorganized. So I'm working on getting all that stuff ready now. But I did find my cord and I had it charging overnight. And when I turned my phone on, eBay just went ballistic and it was just constant cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. It was crazy, but I've got so much work to do with eBay actually. I've got to organize a few things that I've sold and, and get those sent out from the home base in Australia. But yeah, a lot of work to do before we can enjoy the day. Let's see if I can give you guys a little quick tour of where we stayed last night. So here it is, let me give you a quick tour. As soon as you enter, you have to take your shoes off in this little area here. And to the right, it's like a little kitchen area, a little laundry in there. This is pretty cool though, I wanted to show you guys this part. So these are the toilets in Japan. They're so much more technically advanced than anywhere else. Um, the thing that excites me most about this toilet is the bum washer. You press this one here, and it squirts water out of this and cleans it. And it's awesome. If you ever come to Japan and they have one of these, don't be scared, try it. It is the best experience ever. <laughs> and moving on to the little living space they have here. It's pretty cool to have like this table. What I've noticed so far is their tables are all down very low. But down here, I believe is like a heated thing. And this is where I slept last night. Nice and comfy. I didn't get up until about quarter past nine. I went to bed at like maybe 10, so. I had a good sleep. Yeah, I'm ready to get this day started actually. But first I've got to attend to a few things. Here's another example of how incredible Japan's toilet technology is. Oh, that's amazing. So today we're going to head off and explore a bit of Sakai and maybe go to the museum and there's actually a cool park that we're going to as well so I'm going to take you guys along, should be fun. about to head into this family market store. This was one of my first stores in Japan. I gotta get some yen out of the ATM. Are you sure you have everything? So we're now actually at the Nintoku Kofun, which is actually one of the biggest coffins in um, Japan actually. They say here it's actually 486 meters long and it actually has three tiers to it. So it has like a little uh, waterway here and then it has trees along here and then a third waterway there before you reach the center. So here is actually the prayers gate and over the other side you can see they've used like a rake to sort of rake the stones across that way and also to make a path as you can see it's they've raked straight down the center as well i'm starting to notice a lot of japan is really strategically had a lot of thought put into every bit of design that they've done and this is just one example of that it's pretty cool so to better explain these burials there's a smaller one here to make sense of it so they're basically just surrounded by water with the the center burial in the middle there we're now going to head into the sakai city museum
So entry is about 200 yen. We're starting off with a movie. So the movie we just watched was about the burials that we just saw before. And um, it's actually quite amazing to think how conservative the Japanese people are. The burials are like, the one we saw I think was about 15,000 years old, um, dating back to like the fifth century or something like that. And it's just crazy that they're actually still conserving it till this day. And they have plans to keep on looking after it for many more generations to come. They also do say that these, the one we saw before, um, was like 480 meters or so, is actually bigger than like the pyramids in Egypt and things. So this is quite amazing. So when a king or someone died, their tomb would actually be placed in the center of the circle here. So in the early 5th century, Japan actually didn't know how to or didn't have iron. So they had to import it from Korea. And that's where they got their iron from to use for tools like swords and daggers and uh, other equipment like axes and stuff. We're trying the armor on. And this gun here behind me is actually the world's largest gun. It's actually real too. So it's not a replica, it's the actual thing. The gun actually has a firing range of about 1.6 kilometers. And it also weighs about 135 kilograms. So we're on the bottom floor of the museum and they've actually got this cool little masterpiece here. It's actually balancing. So this top one here is balanced on top of there. And if you look closely, you can see it's slightly moving from side to side. So there's this cool little place here that we found hidden amongst the trees. They actually offer a bowl of green tea with dry confectionery. I'm not too sure what that is, but let's go in and find out. We don't know what dry confectionery is. <laughs> Thank you. Made of so here's the dry confectionery. Apparently it's all sugar and you're supposed to have it before the green tea. Confectionery, she told us, was um, some sort of sweet sugar. Green, this beautiful, beautiful color. Do you eat your confectionery? Mm -hmm. How are you going for the tea? So the ritual is eating the confectionery and then finishing it off with the tea because the tea is a little bit bitter. So the confectionery sort of balances it out. So for a bowl of this tea with the two confectionery, it was 300 yen per person. It's actually amazing how safe and secure this country is. We don't even need to lock our bikes up. I'm surprised they're still there actually. So we're now at Sukiya where we're going to be having lunch. So we just got lunch. I got a rice curry, some kind of salad there, and also miso soup. So we're just at this bike store. I want to see if I can actually get a stand for my bike, similar to this bike here. So it clips on either there or it can clip on behind. But look, there's so many bikes here, it's crazy. I didn't have much luck finding the correct stand for this bike. That's okay, I'll just uh, lean it up against walls and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the Shimano Museum was actually closed today. So, so we're thinking about going back tomorrow. So you guys will see that in tomorrow's video, hopefully. Just waiting for Eric right now. But right in front of me, there's this awesome lake here.
wiggle my bike at the moment. My seat came loose. I need to adjust it. But as we do that, I found we found a reuse shop called Second Street. We're about to go in and see what they have to offer. It looks pretty fancy though. So we're inside this shop and it's more like a pawn shop or like a cash converter or something like that. It's really fancy compared to like a normal op shop. So much cool stuff here. They've got some Jordans. They got Columbia, they got Howard Hansen, they got Patagonia, they got North Face, they got everything. It's so cool. Well, that was pretty cool, but unfortunately the prices in there are a little bit too high. So we made it back again for the night. If you guys are liking the videos, give it a thumbs up. Also comment down below if you have any questions and stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.